Hey, what's going on, you mama munching mantastic maroons? <laughs> Welcome to Grunt Speak. Life in the lair. Leap clap and floop de doo at your service, of course. Yep. And uh, I'm back. It was a hell of a weekend. Yeah. But I made it. I'm still here. And you uh, were battling an illness. Yes. That you caught from your plague bringer child. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if it was him or the other plague bringer that we have twice a week. Listen, if kids come into your house. They are plague bringers. Yeah, that's true. Story. I can't tell you how many times my kids go to uh, you know daycare or nursery school or kindergarten. Oh yeah, and then they like my tummy hurts, and of course they're they're kids. <laughs> yeah. So like within twelve hours they're fine, and the next morning literally my you know I, I have a butt situation going on. <laughs> I have a butt situation. Uh, I, I'm doing. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm doing technical yawning. It's uh, wow. You mean technical or yawning? Yeah, technical color yawning. Oh. Then my kids are like, oh my god, are you okay? I'm like, I'll find it. I'll worry about it. <laughs> oh. And there's that blue tongue again. Yep, yep. Deep, hey, look, man. You uh, deep throat and Grover. Now shut up. It's methylene <laughs> blue. Why well, gotta be like that, man? Well, I mean, you should know who's on the other side of the glory hole when you hear, Hello, dear! <laughs> <laughs> Going right down to the balls, man. Stop! Oh, Take my it God. To the base. Take it to burn. the base. <laughs> <laughs> savage burn. <laughs> All, All right, now, man. for tomorrow... Tomorrow. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be doing the stream tomorrow, and we're going to be talking about... Uh, Stephen Harvey. Steve Harvey. Marriage yeah. number three down the shitter. I know. Well, he. Well, it's not official. They're still denying all this stuff. It could be just the rumor mill kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, the bodyguard forgot whose body he was supposed to be guarding. Yeah. From what I yeah. understand. But the, here's the thing. He has been shaming, you know, red pill MGTOW guys for decades. Saying, you know, if you don't want to get married, you know, like literally just belittling us left and right. Well, um, I think karma is coming for him. And uh, we are going to be talking about that that situation. And uh, you guys can, you know, do research and send it during uh, a super chat so we can, uh, you know, help me, you know, basically put together a Pimp Tart Wife Institute if it's needed. <laughs> You guys can assist. Now, normally I do this with uh, supporters on the weekends, but uh, this is going to be a very important subject, and I want to make sure it's done right, and perhaps he'll see it and uh, come after me, and that'll be hilarious. <laughs> He's only about four years older than me, right? Yeah, just about. It's like 62-ish, something like that. He wants to challenge you to a little game of family feud. Wow. Well, I, I mean, I ain't going to fight anybody, but... <laughs> But it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. You know, it, my thing is this. I, like anyone else, like I, I, I ripped apart that senator, mm. you know, because the comments he made about marriage and men not stepping up to the plate, you know. It, it just, it's a feminist talking point. Yeah. And then really well, who's that one dude with the beard? The What's a woman guy? Oh, uh, Matt Walsh. Yeah. Uh, we, we did a video. I did a video, you know. Yep. He said very him, similar stuff. Yeah. Listen, all I can say is this, is I'm sick and tired of burying people because they decide that they're going to get married. They don't know exactly what lies in, uh, in store for them. And literally, <laughs> they are dragged into divorce court and violated like a butt bandit. It's insane. <laughs> the butt bandit. It is insane what they do to the men out there today. And uh, it's one of the main reasons we have so many men homeless and so many men hooked on alcohol and drugs. Because in today's day and age, just to get around in the regular world, you've got to have two incomes. Yep. What do you think happens to these guys when you're taking anywhere from 30 to 60% of their take-home pay? Yeah, also you can give it to women who insist they're already strong and independent without your money. Yeah, because, you know, you sure. know child support technically can only go up to... You know, 35, 40%. Bullshit. But, but, you know, the medical insurance doesn't count. Yep. You know, day, daycare doesn't count. You know, before you know it, you're literally, like, I was uh, working for Edward Jones. I had just started. I was making 1800 gross a month, mm -hmm. and they were taking 1350 of it. <laughs> I literally lived in my car until I was able to find a different gig. Wow. I couldn't live. That is just nuts. Man. I had an, I had enough money to like eat off the dollar menu at my favorite. Uh, well, there's three, you know, yeah. Taco Bell, Burger <laughs> King, and McDonald's. And then every you know third or fourth day, I would I would couch surf, take a shower, watch TV, decompress, and then right back to the car. Yep. And I also had a little money so I could drive it around. I didn't like have to yeah. keep it parked and. Risk of getting towed. I mean, Steve Harvey's not going to be homeless again. At one point in time, he was. Yes, he was. He not was. sure if that was because of the mirage or something else entirely. Well, I mean, I was watching an interview on him where he uh, 
literally had seventeen hundred dollars to his name after he made all that money in Kings of Comedy. Yep. Because he got divorced. And and the man just didn't learn. No. Oh, let's do it again. It'll be fine this time. Now listen, it, it, if you're a young whippersnapper and you want to have kids, I can't recommend this, but I understand if you want to risk it just one time. Just once. If it doesn't work out, which more than likely it won't, don't ever do it again because the chances of staying married just go down the more you do it. Yep. All right. So nah. And the, especially the more they do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the more they've been, uh, you know, cashing in their 401 CAC at the glory hole before they meet you, the less of a chance you have of actually making it to just the five-year mark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... It's insane. And then if you marry a woman with a college education, I mean, their chances of filing for divorce are 10% higher than the standard woman. Who's already at 80%. Well, it, it's between 70 and 80%. I'm just going with the higher one. And yet, like, that's a 90% chance that your parachute's not going to open and you're literally going to burn in. So. Turn into a bowl of human soup. Yeah, I'm not cool. With Tasty. That. <laughs> Gonna serve your head of Panera bread. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody had a good weekend and all that stuff. Um, I, I mean, you mentioned this on the, the Sunday live stream for supporters. Yes. But we definitely got to mention it tonight. We got to raise a glass to the guy who kept all of us company when we were sick home from school. Mr. Bob Barker made it to 99. One hell of a run. And just like on the prices, right? He got as close as he could to a dollar without going over. <laughs> A men and a women. That's gay stuff. I know. No, I like Mr. Barker. And oh yeah, uh, I understand he had some uh, like pretty severe health issues towards the end. They had to fight through. Yeah, apparently it says that he was married one time uh, to Dorothy Jo Gideon. Two met when they were teenagers, married in 1945. She preceded him in death in 1981 at age 57 from lung cancer, and then he was just a bachelor Bob since then. Well, and you know what? I, I, I can respect that. Yeah. Because you know what? Hmm. He's probably like, well, I'm never going to find another woman like that, number one. Yeah. And number two, I just have so much peace now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to live through the nagging tax. Can you give me help? Yep. And, what are you doing? And we, because of him, we have one of the most iconic com- comedy scenes of all time from the 1990s and Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've had enough, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. I just showed Happy Gilmore to my son recently. Oh, yeah? Ever since then. You're ca- He's playing video games. You're going to die, clown! <laughs> 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 yeah! That's my favorite part of the movie. So I'm like, yes! I'm corrupting him well. It's That's good times. That's good times. Yeah. He probably thought it was even funnier than I did because I hadn't watched the movie in probably 10 years. It gets to the part where it's at the, the clown thing and you know he's knocking it up the, the thing and it starts laughing at him, spitting it back. I, I was high, so I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> nice. He didn't have to know that, though. Uh, somebody wants to know what's up with Rumble. Uh, seems to be working fine. There's 401 people watching on there compared to 372 on YouTube. So it might be your problem, Skyhawk. Give it a reload and uh, see what we can do. Suck it up, Buttercup. I can't do anything about it once the stream has started. Yeah, and then uh, do you want to put out the, uh, the changes for Super Chats? Uh, yeah, well, because of how everything has been going, um, we're like our last stream didn't end until almost 11, 11 o'clock. o'clock yeah. So when we start reading chats... Um, just prior to the point where we go through them all, we're going to have what we call a three by three rule. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it's going to be, you know, like we're going to definitely thank you guys. We appreciate everything, but we also want to, you know, get to bed before one o'clock in the morning. And when a stream is finished, I'm not done. So I have to yes. copy the stream, compress it, re upload it, everything. So that's what, that's what we're going to try. We're going to try a three by three rule. So, uh, th- Three dollars or more uh, after ten o'clock, uh, and uh, three chats per person is but defi- what we're definitely going to read. If it's before ten o'clock and everything is coasting along smooth, we're going to hit everybody. Yeah, it's not. A but problem. we're going to thank you all because you guys are awesome and we do appreciate everything. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, man, what do we got here? So, what's the Reaper Zero One? Busy tonight, so super chat and email early. I did see that. We're definitely going to so get much. into it. Appreciate it. I don't know how, uh, I don't know, Reaper Zero One stuff is usually not the most YouTube safe thing that you can possibly uh, read. And we also got, uh, do we have a cash app, don't we? Um, well, I, not that I can, not that I saw. Uh, Might have come in early, I but think I didn't it came see in anything. earlier during the day. Uh, I'm going to double day. check. There was one thing. That I know we definitely got to do. There was a a, sh- a ranger shout out. Yes, that came in. Ranger in need. This comes to us from a fan named Branded, and he says, "Pop, I want to make this as short as possible. I take my dog to the dog park nearly every day, and in that time, I meet a guy there. His name is Jason Woolwine, who is a former 18 series seventh SFG, if I remember correctly. Uh, seven uh, sp- uh, special forces. Seven special forces group. Okay, cool. As service members, we do. As service members do, we connected immediately, and it has become a daily ritual to meet up for a couple of hours when I'm not flying missions. About a month ago, we met another dog there named Diggs. His owner mentioned that he himself, Lima, 26, is a veteran, and so is his Diggs. Uh, so is his dog Diggs. Diggs and Lima were Airborne Rangers from uh, 275. That's uh, yeah, second. Uh Second Ranger Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. Okay. Uh, Lima was medically discharged due to a TBI and PTSD. Sounds familiar. That yeah. occurred during his last mission when an IED detonated. Again, sounds very familiar. Yeah. Uh, Diggs was their bomb dog, and he was caught in the blast along with his handler. His handler died from the explosion, oh. and Diggs was severely injured, but managed to survive shrapnel to his hip and an infection he incurred while crawling back to his handler. Ugh. This happened in Afghanistan in 2020. Uh, Lima took ownership of Diggs upon his discharge, and they have been support for each other since. Lima mentioned he grew up in an orphanage, and the Army gave him a sense of purpose and a home to which he wanted to dedicate his life to. He's currently homeless since his landlord wanted to up his rent $800 a month and he couldn't afford it. Wow. He's homeless and housed at the VA Soldiers' Home in Orting, Washington. Diggs has aggravated the injury he sustained to his back hip and needs ACL surgery. The VA is being the VA and unwilling to pay for the entire surgery since it's not service-connected. Well, if it's well, if it's uh, from the blast... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to have to go through the motions to fight that shit. Yeah, same old administrative violence bureaucratic yeah. shtick. Uh, Lima's not able to afford the surgery and is taking a massive mental toll on him. Jason, the former Special Forces guy, has set up a GoFundMe to help Diggs vet bill. I'm not asking for any money from you. If you'd be willing to promote his fundraiser on your channel, we would all be eternally grateful. Well, we're definitely going to donate to you here, brother. Yep. Uh, Diggs is a good boy, and his owner is a good young man who is doing the best he can with the cards life has dealt him. If there's anything that I have learned from listening to your stories for six years, is that rangers will keep fighting until they are dead. Yes, and that's he right. does have the of the fundraiser right here. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Uh, we did post the link to the fundraiser on redonculus dot com. If you go there, uh, you can click on watch our content on the first page. Click on the stream, but I will post it in the chat for you guys. Here, I'm copying it right now. And if you guys make donations, just leave a comment saying Ranger Pop sent you. Yep, it's going in the YouTube chat now. Here it comes on Rumble. Odyssey chat coming your way. Uh, MGTOW chat, here you go. D live. <laughs> Rocking it out over on Twitch. See what happens when you broadcast to so many channels at once. And uh, now on kick. Boom. There you go. There you go. Yeah, and uh, dudes, let me know what's going on in the Rumble thing tonight. We're on a new server over there. Um, Amr is you know, doing his upgrades yeah, and growing yeah. pains thing like that so if there's any issues make sure that you let me know shoot me an email so that I can forward everything to Amr and he will address it accordingly see I didn't understand when he said that you know there's a new feature that plays through I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah play, pass through is like it basically takes the signal uninterrupted uncompressed and just lets it play oh okay so that's what that is so yeah digs the military dog look at that little face we're big dog lovers over here. So, yeah. Well, the VA is not going to pay for your pet. That's just not going to happen. No. Uh, but uh, here we, we go. got we got a a few really good ones here what for you tonight. What is the theme for tonight? Narcissistic people. Well, this one is not necessarily in that group. Doing it the, wrong. The last two were, but yeah, this one here, you're doing it wrong. Yep. 
Uh, this couple tried to conceive for years. Turns out they were having sex all wrong. Mm. It's really interesting how this works. <laughs> oh, no. It was a wild misconception. A Chinese couple who tried for years to conceive was flummoxed after discovering they'd been having sex wrong the whole time. <laughs> per a resurfaced report making its rounds on digital media, four years of marriage, neither the husband nor the wife knew how to get pregnant. Wow. Amazing. This is from China? China. Couples so lacking in general knowledge are very rare. They are 24 and 26, respectively. They sought medical attention after they were unable to get pregnant despite making a whoopee on the reg for four years straight. Ah, <laughs> hilarious. I love the picture. Just like, <sighs> Obstetrician realized something was awry after the woman claimed that intercourse was unusually painful, but she powered through with the hopes of hitting prenatal pay dirt. <laughs> Thinking she was it was an underlying condition, Lou ran some tests. This is the doctor, only for them to reveal something far more shocking. <laughs> the woman was still a virgin. <laughs> He's in the wrong hole. <laughs> Lou's experience prompted her to inspect the woman's anus, whereupon she discovered that their inability to conceive was due to the fact that they'd been mistakenly been engaging in the butt play for four years straight. <laughs> <laughs> hit the hole, pole man. Hit the hole. Shit happens. What can I say? <laughs> wow. That is insane. In the membrane. It's like, they've never watched porn at all? I, I, I mean, you'd think in China they would. I mean, most of the, the crazy, crazy corn that you get yeah. from all over the world always comes from Asia. J Japan and China yeah, especially. Listen, the, uh, first of all, his father failed him. Yes. <laughs> all right. Now, f Listen. If there's any doubt you know what the hell your son is going to be doing on the big day, sit him down in front of a TV screen <laughs> and and literally show him how the whole thing works. It'll take 15 minutes. That's it. That's all it takes. And then your conscience is clear. <laughs> I just don't understand how you can get to be a full-grown adult and not understand. I mean, maybe... Maybe his father just didn't want him to have to deal with the kind of crap that men over here deal with. And so he taught him, when you got a nut, put it in her butt. Or something <laughs> something that would be easy to remember. Although in China, so, or whatever the hell it is. I, 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 I can't speak Chinese. I can't either. So this boudoir backfire might seem easily avoidable. However, Lou claimed it is not uncommon for people to lack or have misconceptions regarding sexual knowledge. In order to remedy their illiteracy, the good doctor gave the couple a sex education handbook as well as guidelines on how to correctly slay it in the sack. <laughs> Lo and behold, it paid dividends. Uh, she became pregnant a few months later, after which the couple notified the now-retired clinician by sending her former hospital a live chicken and a hundred eggs. Nice. Since, like the hen, they had finally figured out how to have a good lay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> you would think that this would be satire. Yeah, no. I, wow. I can believe this, actually. L listen, there are just some stupid people out there. Yep. Now, I don't think these people are, like, stupid, stupid. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they were not edumacated, correct? Yeah, correct, yes. I, I don't know where they were. I mean, this is communist China, so is anyone really educated there? They basically just make these people smart enough to run the machines, and that's it. Well, to be honest with you, they're probably, uh, at least in the cities, they're probably be better educated than our youth. That's uh, not saying much. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I some mean, of our youth are, are so out of it, they don't know what the hell they're doing. Oh, I know. Uh, members of Gen Z, I remember uh, in April of 2012, when we were talking about the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic, were shocked that it was a true story. Oh, it my. wasn't just a movie. Yeah. One day, these kids are going to be so indoctrinated and poorly educated, they're going to think Saving Private Ryan was just a movie, and there was no World War II. That's well, the direction we're headed. Well, yeah, you got a whole bunch of people that deny the Holocaust. Yep. Now, do I... It, it, you got people denying that the Earth is a globe. Yes. The, one of my favorite self-owns of all time came from one of the Flat Earther groups on Facebook. Us flat earthers, we have members all over the globe. All right, say it again. Then this time slowly. 
because sometimes <laughs> stupid doesn't stick on the first pass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. And, and I love their thing. Well, nobody's actually observed the Earth being round. Like, you haven't been in an airplane. You literally can't see the curvature of the Earth well, when mean, you're flying over the oceans. Because I could. Well, when you shoot over twelve, was it twelve hundred meters? Maybe fifteen hundred. You have to uh, figure in the Cor- Coriolis effect. Yeah, and that is because the Earth spins, mm-hmm. and when you fire the round. It'll probably be off anywhere from one to four inches, depending upon where you are on the latitude of the of the globe. The globe. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's just mean. Uh, Jimmy Bones sent me a meme. It's Steve Harvey going like this, and then down like this, <laughs> and it says, "Name something that was doomed to fail. Your third marriage." Oh. Listen, I. So sad. I don't have no idea what this guy's thinking. It's his third shot. Uh, I don't know. And I don't think he's got a prenup with the third one. Uh, if he doesn't have a prenup for the third one, he is dumber than a box of blonde hair held down with rocks. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Just. Uh, I don't know. Good times. We'll cover it tomorrow. We'll cover yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to jump in here and read a couple of uh, YouTube chats here, and then we will uh, read an email that ties directly in to this first narcissistic mom that we got to oh, talk about Oh, here we today. go. Uh, we got uh, Ma- Mario Trujillo. Uh, something fast food showed me is some kids instantly realize, oh, my parents suck. <laughs> you might be surprised how many kids that were more mature than the so-called adults in their lives. Oh, yeah. Keep it up, Pop. Yeah, yeah, never, I mean, Robin Williams said it best, and Mrs. Doubtfire is like, don't talk down to children, they're little people, okay? Yeah. You got to talk to them like small versions of yourself. They're not dumb, they just haven't gotten there yet. Well, yeah, they haven't been here long enough. Exactly. Uh, Pixel's going their own way from Poland, says, sup, boys? How you doing, good sir? Poland's a very based country, big fan. For now. For now, exactly. Uh, Dung is fun. Pop, I thought you were in your 40s. Keep it going. Well, there you go. We could be 55 uh, in October, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, fuck you, bro. Age is just a number until it's not. No, it, I, I, I have never been one of those people. Yeah. Hey, it's just it's a number. No, no, no. That I know. It's Age not. is a fucking cunt <laughs> who slowly steals your shit. Yep. And you don't even know it. Until you like start walking around and like tendons get ripped off bones, you're like, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" You know, like, yeah, like was it six months ago, I was demonstrating a knife hand on a heavy bag. Yeah, came in, and I, I literally felt the tendon in my elbow like almost rip rip Ooh. off the bone. I was like, "Ah, it's gonna hurt," and it still hurts to this goddamn day. That sucks, man. Yeah, like when you're young, it's like you can break a bone and shake it off within a like a day. You know, like my kid, it, he fractured his arm, put him in a cast. The next day, he's running around playing like it was nothing. Yeah, like if you watch my fights when I was young, I literally just walked right through everything because I was nigh invulnerable. Yeah, <laughs> I remember <laughs> watching anymore. those fights. It was pretty gruesome. Uh, Dungus Fun says, "Which bee produces milk? Boobies." <laughs> we were just talking about titties before the show. We're big fans. Nice, yeah. Uh, Ascension says, I think you're going to kick get a kick out of these videos. He did send in three videos. We will watch them on New Tech. Okay. All right. So we have a dude here. Or should I just throw this up here for but? Mm. want to make sure that we cover this uh, dude's email daughter here. Advice? Seeking daughter advice. No, this he is does, something that we don't normally get. Let's not mention his name or anything. Okay. No, no, it's right. fine. Uh, now, gentlemen, thank you for reading this and for all that you do for the men of the world. I'm a longtime listener, first-time caller. I share your content with my male coworkers frequently. I'm looking for advice to give to my daughter. I've been uh, red-pilled for a few years now, and I know exactly what advice I'll be giving my sons when they grow up. But there's a considerable lack of advice for women. Specifically, there are two parts to my question. First is regarding a career. Mm. My 16-year-old daughter is at the point where she's being pressured to decide what to do for a living. Obviously, the education system is really pushing college, and I'm strongly pushing back. She doesn't really have any aspirations, and I know from experience that going to college without a definitive goal just leads to more debt than going with one. Correct. 
A lot of kids are just going for the experience. And we all know what kind of experience that is. All right, now, what you should probably suggest is once you get out of high school. Well, oh, there's a lot more here. I, I, I don't know if you want to read it before, uh, we, oh, yeah, before okay. you get into suggestions. Um, da, da, da. Uh, a lot of kids are going just for the experience and realize too late how crushing that debt is. Yes. I've shown her a lot of the stuff that Mike Rowe puts out about the trades, but she says she's interested. She suffers from anxiety like so many of her generation, and she's not self-motivated. I'll, I'll give you one tip for that. Remove social media from her life. The anxiety will, will dissipate within 90 days. Yep. Guaranteed. I've told her there's no rush to move out of our house because I'd rather support her a few extra years while she figures things out than have her jump into college without being certain and take useless classes and rack up debt like I did 20 years well, ago. Well, two-thirds of all the classes you take now are just bullshit. They are complete bullshit. You don't need them. So any career suggestions that you can give him? That's the first question. Uh, first thing is uh, you're going to have to get her exposed to the way the real world works. Mm -hmm. Like have her become a waitress and, you know, have to like do all of that menial, like backbreaking crap. And uh, look, because I was the same way when I, I got done with high school and I went in the army and I remember... I was in ranger school, Florida phase. I weighed like 138 pounds, concentration camp victim. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I, that college is sounding pretty good right about now. <laughs> 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 so I, I, you know, I, I decided to go to college for uh, administration. And, uh, you know, luckily I didn't get hosed too bad on student debt, a little bit towards the end, but... I, I paid it off with the proceeds from punching people in the mush. Well, there you go. But yeah, I mean, the, and that also helped light a fire under her ass too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because nobody's going to figure out what their career is from their first job. That's why you do some jobs, you know. But uh, yeah, waiting tables is actually one of the best things that I ever did because it really teaches you patience. Uh, it teaches you <laughs> how to read people's body language. There's a lot of skills that you can learn the from most waiting important tables. One it's how to navigate assholes. Exactly. And you can learn a lot of that working retail as well. So you can always tell who didn't work retail or food service when you go out and you hear some of these motherfuckers complain. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Go walk a mile and not even that. Walk a quarter of a mile in that person's shoes just once and see how well you do. Yeah, I mean, I was a bar back. I worked at a, a restaurant in Southfield called Croissants. 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 Quattro Quattro. Yeah. And, uh, like, the bar back job, that one really sucked. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Uh, so that is our two cents on that one. Next, he says, is the relationship aspect. Ah, uh, the penis question. Everything seems to revolve around don't be a whore, and I've certainly passed on that message. She's shown no interest in boys or dating, which I've thus far taken as a good thing. However, since TikTok became a place for post-wall single women to vent, my eyes are open to the reality of the modern Western woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me. At Guinness. I'm in an uncomfortable position of telling her she's about to enter her most valuable years in the eyes of men. How do I tell her she needs to spend her next 10 years on a mission to find a secure equality man, likely one older than her, and start cranking out babies when she proudly declares she doesn't want to ever get married? She likely won't believe me since her mother is her closest point of reference. My wife of 17 years is a homemaker raising three kids. While our marriage isn't great, she's passed up on going back to work and ending the marriage over and over again. Mm -hmm. She knows she has it good, but she complains so much, my kids all probably think she's miserable. Telling my daughter to follow in my wife's footsteps sounds like bad advice to someone without real-world experience. I'm lost and running out of time to set her on the right path. All right, well, I don't want to give you the advice that she'll figure it out on her own, but you need to be able to convey to her the importance of the whisker biscuit, not to hand it out to... <clears throat> To you know, just you know, Joe shoots a rag bag biscuit. Yeah, yeah listen, you don't want to. Don't be handing out free samples <laughs> to the whisker biscuit to uh, Joe shit the rag bag. That's too fucking funny, man. Whisker well, biscuit. I'm serious. You, you, <laughs> I mean, like, here's another thing: is you, you, uh. you could probably show her some videos of what happens to like uh, these women who uh, 
you know, do OnlyFans or or porn. What happens? Oh down yeah. the road. They made a whole feature length documentaries called After Porn Ends. Yeah, and listen, she's got to keep that body count as low as she possibly can if she wants to yep. succeed in today's day and age. Because uh, dudes have wised up, and just because it's normal now for women to have a double digit body count doesn't mean it's what we're looking for. No, it's it's not. I mean, five point one men. Out of a thousand are getting married now. Yep, and I just feel sorry for the quadriplegic they have to roll in there to. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's against his will. <laughs> that point one. Yep, that, these that, dudes are walking away from the plate, and we all know where that leaves these ladies. Express train ticket. Stop! Don't touch me there. This is my no no square. Stop. <laughs> And not a single fuck was given that day. Yeah, yeah. Listen, uh, like, okay. And then uh, giving advice to, like, on daughters, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm the guy for you. Yeah. Yeah, because it didn't really work out with me. So, you know, I did the best I could, fell on my face. You just well, gotta do what you got to do. As a dude in today's day and age trying to raise daughters, it is really, really difficult to encourage somebody you know, with a mantra of personal responsibility when they're being inundated and indoctrinated every single day with nothing is ever your fault. It's all men's fault. You shouldn't have to take responsibility for anything that you do. Go out and be a whore. You shouldn't be judged for it. Well, yeah, shouldn't be and will be are two, different are two very different things. Yep. And all the blame and shame in the world is not going to turn off our hardwired biological programming. We are disgusted by women with triple-digit body counts, pure and simple. And another thing they don't teach the youth of today, like marriage is great for about two years until the feels dry up, which they almost always do. And then it's a goddamn job. Yeah, that, yeah, even the best marriages, because I, I yeah. think I have a good one, they are work. Yeah. Always. You gotta, you know. You're not going to agree on everything. You're going to have to discuss some shit, mm-hmm. talk some things out. You're like, going to have fights. You're going to live in a house with somebody that like smells, <laughs> shits in the toilet, <laughs> you know, does stupid stuff. Yeah, you know you've really made it when they're shitting with the door open and you just get to walk into that invisible wall. And listen, women have an overactive, uh, you know, SMS system. Yep. You know, shit maintenance system. <laughs> As long as they wipe front to back. No, no. I'm, I'm talking like she has her, her place, you have your place. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden you come together and then there's double the amount of shit. And slowly but surely your stuff will disappear Yep. and new things will appear. I can't tell you how many times I'd be like, hey, honey, where's that Ranger shirt I had? Oh, I had a hole in it. I threw it out like, what? Th- that was a lucky hole. God damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> uh, I hate that. I, you know, and this, it's just the way it is. Your shit's going to disappear. And it gets dudes, really frustrating. Dudes will hang on to shit until it literally falls apart. And like yeah, most dudes, like say say you get you get tools. He'll have a thing of tools. He'll go to where he keeps the tools. And they're like, uh, hey, what you do with those tools? Ah, oh, they're over there in the tool area. <laughs> 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 most guys aren't aren't gonna like you know. It is what it is. <laughs> it's super organized unless they have OCD or something. Yeah. You know, and if it's really bad, you're, I'm going to have to assess you a homo suspicion point. Uh, yeah, there's always that. <laughs> you're kind of thinking like a chick, I have to say. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah, I will, yeah. It's just my opinion. Uh, don't get, don't kill a messenger. I'm just saying. Yeah, no. I mean, like married dudes, uh, you know, myself included, uh, we all get homo suspicion points assessed simply because there are th- certain things that will only exist in the homes. Of gay men, women, and married men. Correct. Like throw pillows. Or knick-knack, pettywhack. You got to buy it to give your wife the bone. Yeah. Or throw blankets. Oh. Yeah. See, I, I don't like have that. throw blankets. I have sleeping bags. Luckily, I don't have the wife who wants like the, the seashell soaps that are for oh, the fancy soap for guests on the back. My mom used to have that shit. And I'm like, I just want to wash my hands. No, don't use that soap. That's don't use that. That's for guests. Like The guests don't use it. Yeah, I, I never touched that soap because I remember fighting that, that battle with my grandmother. <laughs> I used like the the fancy soap, and she comes in. Yeah. She's like, Terry. Well, now the ridges are gone. 
You can't use that soap. <laughs> what? Why? It's, isn't it soap? I mean, you wash it. No, you it's self-cleaning. You don't use that soap. <laughs> a, a bar of soap under the sink you have to use. Right. Like, why don't you just put that soap on? What? I just can't understand you it. You want to wash my hands with the same soap that you used to wash your ass crack? No thanks, Grandma. <laughs> I'm going to use the fancy soaps. But, I'm, you know, it's your I'm grandma. a guest. Yeah, it's your grandma, so you're not like going to get into a heated argument. Yeah. There. You're just like, yeah, yes, man. I guess I'm not a fancy enough guest to use the little seashell soap. <laughs> 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 the fuck, Grandma? <laughs> oh, dude, you could do, I could do a whole comedy video on grandmas. Yeah. Uh. You, know, you just you, you get a mess with them, especially when you're a kid. You know, you stay the night over there, you know, the, the, and then you you always run the risk of seeing your grandparents naked. It's like the most terrifying, shocking thing in the world That's to a, a tiny kid. Fuel, yep. And then it's like, all right, look, I, I, I will refrain from using the soaps if you can refrain from doing your calisthenics with the door open, Grandma. This was my nightmare fuel. Boo. No, no, no. <laughs> Bill. No! Because <laughs> ah! I didn't know oh. what that was until about about 9 or 10. I'm like, what is that? Oh, shit. <laughs> that is some nightmare fuel. Uh, they yeah, just pretend I, like they're playing Star Wars and your grandpa's really Darth Vader. <laughs> I don't know, man. I am your daddy. <laughs> it's about a half a dozen times. I like sit there. <laughs> <laughs> that, was rough, uh, that was a rough day for the popster. It's a very nasty day. It's gonna say. <laughs> uh, but speaking of rough, rough times, mm. and you know, this goes back to the email that we just read about this dude. He's trying to do what's right for his his daughter. What's right for his kids in general? He's got sons too. Well, uh, single moms. Here we go. Not so much. You've heard of Munchausen by proxy, right? Well, uh, there's also this other little thing that a lot of single mothers like to do. They like to keep their children dependent because they know that one day th- they're terrified of the empty nest syndrome. And yep. this is what you get. Yep. I refuse to let my teen son get a job. That's insane. I will fund his existence. Mm. Wow. Good luck with that. Let's, uh, let's just... Set him up for failure right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, come on. Amazing. Listen, I mean, that's another... I think another thing that's screwing up the, the young men of today is these single mothers, like, helicopter over their kids. Yep. Overly protective. You know, give them everything that they possibly can, and you're you're not doing them any kind of service later on in life. No. All right, if you want to, if you want to succeed... You are going to have to take some goddamn beatdowns. Yeah. And every physical beatdowns, mental, and I, I would say, you know, so maybe a couple spiritual beatdowns. Meaning, like, you have a really close friend and he's going to stab you in the back. It happens to everybody. Yep. Or you have an, like, somebody else close to you that just suddenly dies. It, it happens. It does. So, Shit happens, man. Yeah, in fact, uh, the supporters put down a, a stream for uh, actually put a list together of all of the things a man sh- will have to face in his life. We'll have to do that stream soon. That sounds like a good one. So I love this. She's not a regular mom. She's a cool mom. All right, who wrote this? Uh, Brooke Cato? Fuck you. <laughs> Esther Boyd. I didn't know they were still naming him Esther. <laughs> refuses to allow her teenage son to get a job because he should do what he wants while he still has his time as a kid. That part I can re- yeah, respect. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. But you get you got to teach the dude about reality sooner yeah. or later. God, it seems like I've been working forever. I'm already physically and mentally ready to retire. She's 33. Yeah, get the hell out of here. I thought you were strong and independent. <clears throat> yeah. You could do it all. You could do everything a man could do, and you could do it better, but you're 33, and you're already ready to cash in your chips. It's good times. <laughs> Explaining she'd been working since she was 14. Protective Mama Bear just doesn't want her 15-year-old son Noah to do the same. I told him, I don't want you to get a job. I don't think it's a smart idea. He just ha- he has to work just to stay alive. Or he doesn't want it- she doesn't want him to think that he just has to work to stay alive. Uh, well, That's how the world works. That is kind of how it works. Because yeah. every single day, shit has to die to keep you here. Yeah. 
you could do this your whole life. Why start now? I mean, what if he's 15? Yeah, you know, that, that, wait until you're 17. Go out and get a job. Fine. But, you know, you could do odd jobs. Well, chore, I got, you know, choring around the house, things like that. Yeah, my first job was at 13, and I uh, delivered the Detroit News. There you go. I was a lot of people's first job. Yeah. Uh, while Esther can still proudly fund his existence, she wants Noah to discover his passions and find something he cares about or enjoys. Uh, most of the time, if you L O V E your job, that spells P O O R. Yes. It's very rare that it doesn't. After the mom of one started working at 14 as a waitress, she spent her 20s trying to find a career of interest. Nearly two decades later, she works as a photographer and marketing coordinator in Burley Heads, Australia. Oh, shocker. One of the, uh, one of the feminist capitals of the Western world, Australia. Yep. And she's still a single mom. <laughs> so strong and independent. Why does he look like that? Um, he's probably put that on to keep from getting sunburned. Uh, maybe. But then she's... Get, eh, whatever, she's got the piercing here, and she's got the 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 nose, the septum piercing too. Automatic red fleecy. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least she's got a good relationship with her son. That's a good. Story. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. You, but, but you can tell what side her bread is buttered on. She's being a little overprotective, I would say. A little bit. I mean, when I was fifteen, I, I mean, I had a all summer. I had a job up until football season started. Yeah. And the thing is, if you start early, you learn early. Yeah. And then when you, you go out there, you're that much farther ahead than your peers. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Especially in the long haul. Uh, I think it's insane to tell a small child who's 14 to go out into the world and get a job for experience as if they're not going to get that experience their whole life, she said, adding that her son is, st son is still young. He's not going to retire until he's like 100. Uh, no, he's a dude. He's going to work himself to death, and he'll be lucky if he makes it past 65. Uh, thank God. <laughs> Noah's friends are employed, which inspired him to ask his mom about applying for jobs, too, desiring money to do stuff. I said, I'll give it money to do stuff. I can fund your existence, she said, noting how privileged their family's situation is. Yep. A two-person family, huh? Just saying. Well, she's 33 and he's 15. <laughs> Yeah. Math works both ways. Yeah, so she was fresh out of uh, high school when she decided to drop a crotch cricket. Or maybe she, uh, you know, while she was getting the thousand cock stare in high school, somebody slipped one by the goalie her senior year. Yep. <laughs> It'll never happen to me. These things happen, man. Happens all the time. Listen, there is no goalie in the net when you're 18. No. No, I mean... I mean, the goalie can score from the other side of the of the ice, not even trying. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, I don't know. Modern women just, they just throw me. They, they, they did confuse me. I, I can't put my head in their space. All I know is that this kid looks like he is very much on the way. Mm-hmm to uh, a taxidermy hobby and possibly running a hotel Yes, with, with her, you know, a taxidermy corpse watching from the window upstairs. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. He's got that. Uh, I'm getting a serial killer vibe from him. Yeah, that dude, that honker on that kid is not going to, I mean, it's going to continue growing as he gets older. Uh, he might he might grow into it, but then it's going to outgrow him. No. Uh, if It'd be bad. Like, if I uh, was responsible for a young man like that, he would pray on the altar of steel three times a week. Yeah. I would make him a physically strong individual. Yes. And uh, yeah, then people wouldn't be as distracted by his coke snorter that yep. <laughs> he's got going on here. And, or the dick scratchers that are, you know, embedded in his mother's nose. <laughs> uh, it's just horrendous. But it can always be worse. <laughs> it yeah, can yeah. always be worse. Oh, yes. Never ever think this is the worst of it. Ah. Are you ready for this? Here we go. I left my family from my dream man and ignored huge red flags. It almost killed me. Okay, so we have a woman who has destroyed her family for a piece of strange. And here's how to spot a narcissist before you make the same mistake. All right, so. 
She destroyed her family for a strange piece of Kaoka. Kaoka. But it's not her fault. It's his fault. Because he's a narcissist. Well, listen. uh, One of the key things of a narcissist is selfishness. And they take no accountability whatsoever for their decisions and how they destroy the lives of other people. Sounds kind of like the pot calling the kettle black, if you ask me. I would say so. Emily left her marriage when she met the handsome magnetic Angus names changed to, you know, protect the not-so-innocent, of course. Angus! But she was certain she had met the one. Never been so smitten. Within months, she had broken up her family to pursue a relationship with the tall, handsome stranger who gave her intense butterflies. It's all about the feels, Pop. Yeah. All about the feels. And I'm sure he uh, was giving her the 10 dick. Yeah. Yeah. And it almost killed her. Yeah. I'm sure all those... uh, Yeah. uh, Whatever. Speaking to female, I still think that this is garbage Uh, the mom (laughs) revealed how she got stuck in an evil narcissist's web was used abused and financially drained and the signs she missed or ignored that landed her there i had only ever dated good men i didn't realize how evil they could be well yeah they're all good now all right i'm sure you treated them like garbage at the time well first of all uh men when they're of a certain age, all they really want to do is hit the poom. Mm-hmm. They will lie. They will deceive. They will do whatever it takes short of like a beat down yep. to secure a hit at the pink taco. That's about it, too. And that's about what she says here. Angus made me feel alive. I was addicted to the roller coaster and the sex. I had never felt like that with anyone and thought that meant it was true love. See, this is why you can never take modern women seriously. That's right. Most of them, the super majority, confuse getting, you know, getting the 23 dick with love. With love. Love. All right. So... But I was wrong. It was anything but. I'm sure he hit that, too. I probably did. Probably hit her right there. (laughs) Right in the rump rows. Right in the rump rows. Probably didn't even take the yoga pants off first. I'm sure there's still some fabric up in there. Just like the Chinese couple. (laughs) Except he knew what he was doing because his name is Angus. Angus. (laughs) That's right. He brought the, uh, the grade A prime choice meat. So he was the bull. Couldn't turn it down. Yeah, he was the bull. <laughs> now she's chosen to share her story to help others from making the same mistake. Wait. Listen, uh, if you train wreck your life like this, I'm not even going to hand you the dictionary so you can look up, uh, you know, sympathy. sympathy. Yep. I'm not. No, you can go to hell. <laughs> Sorry. It's not yeah. happening. This woman destroyed her family for a piece of strange, and now she's like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm doing the honorable thing. I'm going to help other people while blaming him for my yeah. mistake. Correct. Got it. I was always on eggshells. I lost my appetite and a lot of weight. People kept asking me if I was sick because I'd become so thin. Then I fainted in front of my kids, and I knew I had let things go too far. Well, that's why you don't leave the butt plug inside. Yeah, that's bad. This Never bad. do that. This is bad, right? It was bad. (laughs) Shortly after the fainting episode, Angus ruined another evening, screaming at Emily in the middle of a popular restaurant. He asked me if I had a good night. I said, no, actually. And he smiled and said, ah, that feels good. So he screamed at one of her children in a restaurant? No, screaming at Emily in the middle of a popular restaurant. Sure, shortly after the fainting episode. Ah, So, I mean, like, this is kind of weirdly written. It's like a second, third person kind yeah. of thing. Right. I kicked him out of my bed there and then and told him not to come back. Uh huh. The relationship went on for years. Wait, wait, what? Yeah. Okay, so if you kicked him out of his out of your bed and you told him not to come back, but then the relationship went on for years, uh, there, there's a word for that. Um, uh, stupid. Yeah. And this stupid is, spelled with two O's just but, to drag it out. But women like this are the reason why soap operas have been around since the radio was invented. They're addicted to the roller coaster and the drama. Yeah. Ooh. 
they want those high emotional highs of the fights and the sex, and they want those low emotional lows when they don't know whether or not the, like the, the Diaka is gone forever or if it's going to come back. They love it. Yep. They complain about it nonstop. Why? Because it gives them something to talk about with their friends. Yep. They act like they hate it, but they love it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> the way he twisted my brain to make me feel like I wasn't good enough, that I was nothing without him and would be nobody if I left, made me keep coming back. Well, let's just... Can we assess that statement for a moment? All right. This is a woman with multiple children. She's married, which was means married. that was married. She, uh-huh. she destroyed her family in order to go after this guy. So she is a divorced, cheating mother of many. What, what options is she really going to have if this goes south? None. He is 1,000% correct if any of this is true. Yep. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, uh, I would love to see this happen more, or at least talked about mm-hmm. more. Because uh, listen, I know lots of women in my age bracket who did similar things, got divorced, and now you know, ten, fifteen years later, they're singing the blues, and I got nothing for them. Yep, I, I literally, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, listen, you, you shoot yourself in the foot. That's your business. You pay your medical bills, whatever. You deal. That's right. You do exactly what women tell us to do. You man the fuck up. (laughs) Wah. Oh, this is good here. Hmm. We would end it. He would smear my name, and then I would crawl back and apologize like some helpless child. He reduced me to the scared, confused, abused child I had once been. Damn it! There it is. There it is. Because I'd shared the dark parts of my past with him. See, now, this is something that we've discussed before. Like, you can basically outline a predictive model of somebody's future based on their past most of the time, and especially modern women, because most of them refuse to admit that they are the problem. Yeah. And. The, the most of us are just going to be fucked up fun house mirrors of the relationship that was the example to us, which is our parents. So if you grow up in an abusive environment in here, That's you're going to see, normal. yeah, you're going to seek that out because like you said, it feels normal. Yeah. It's your normal. It's your normal. Yeah. And it's going to circumvent everything that you think, you know, <laughs> if you haven't actually accepted the fact that you were abused and you need to be aware Correct. You need treatment for this stuff. Because if you don't, you just perpetuate the cycle. It starts all over again, with you, not just with you, but with your kids. Bada boom, bada bing. You can, like most, the vast supermajority of the problems that people have in their lives are self-inflicted. Yeah, and you and I are no exception. Exactly. That's right. I am not perfect. Yeah, and I know I've thrown a wrench in my own life a couple times. Oh, you! All of us throw our own flying crossbody cock block yep. over and over again. Correct. That's why we made that video, "Life When You're Stupid," and it doesn't take long to explain, which just shows you how stupid it is. <laughs> <laughs> the shortest distance between point A and B is a straight line. When you're stupid, it turns. It looks like a telephone cord. That's right, because <laughs> lessons will be repeated. <laughs> Until they are learned. Yep. As I know, do I feel bad for what happened to Emily when she was a child? Absolutely. She had no yeah. control over that. But once you're an adult who is now responsible for raising other people into adulthood, it is on you to confront your demons and make sure they do not destroy the lives of your children like they harmed you. It's called adulting. Yes. Welcome to the club. Ugh. The last time they got back together, see, this is, this is that emotional roller coaster we were talking about. Angus moved in with Emily, but he refused to pay rent or help with the bills. Why, why should he? You keep coming back. <laughs> I don't personally believe that. 
that this sounds like it, we're, we're kind of drifting off into La La Land because, you know, th- this is a, a story where she doesn't have to put her name on it. Uh-huh. She doesn't have to provide any evidence. So, of course, she's going to make him seem even worse than he actually was because she has to be the victim. And maybe he really was a narcissist Yeah, he because may- it takes one to know one. Yeah, he could be this guy. Yeah. He absolutely could be. Yeah, is it likely? Uh, I would yeah. be an off chance. But if you are always crawling back, no matter what, why the hell would he pay bills? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Leave them? Yeah. And another thing, too. This is something that I love pointing out to to people. Because I know somebody who thinks that she's going to wind up happily ever after. with Uh. She destroyed her family, and now she thinks that she's going to get the dude that she broke up her family with to to destroy his family as well so they can live happily ever after because they're best friends. Um, that's not going to happen. You want to know why? Well, chances because, are it won't happen. Because as soon as reality sets in, both of you are going to look across from each other at the dinner table and realize at the same time that if we did, if this person sitting across from me did this to a family where the, where the contracts were signed, the mortgage was in the family name and all yeah. that shit, and you threw it all away, they can do it again. To you? That's why I don't... Date divorced women. It, it was, I, t- I do not take yeah. them serious. Relationships like this are doomed from the start because they are built on a fundamental lack of trust and respect. Correct. <laughs> I mean, and if they're both narcissists, exactly, but which they both clearly are. Yes, that's going to work out. Yeah. Even if everything she says about this guy is true. She still picked him. She still destroyed her family to fuck him and kept welcoming him back. For despite years. Despite all of this. Yeah, for years. Yeah, that's not going to have a negative effect on your children, Emily. Wow. He also made Emily quit her job as there were too many young, good-looking men there. Well... This is the thing here. This is I don't believe this, but that's fine. Well, this is one of those things. This is the, the turd at the top of the uh, of the mud of the muddy shitty hill. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't believe it. If if you refuse to stand up for yourself the first time they flick that turd and it starts gathering steam, well, sooner or later it's going to be a huge fucking turbo turd the size of the boulder from Raiders of the Lost Ark, and you're running for your life. So you're saying it'll cause a Shitstorm. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, and the reason I'm telling her this is because if the situations were reversed, because women do this shit to men all the time. Isolate them away from friends, isolate them away from family. I don't want you hanging out with that person. They're a bad influence. Women do this to men all, all the, time. the time. And if you let them do it, you're fucking responsible <laughs> just like they are. And I believe we called that testiculus redonculitis. Exactly. So the bottom line is this. If you're going to play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. If you're going to destroy your family so that you can go bang a narcissist who treats you like dirt for years, and then you want sympathy, you're not going to find it anywhere but the dictionary. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) You're not getting it from me. I I could care less. Ugh. He told me I could work for him instead, but then he would fire me every second day and act like I should be grateful for the opportunity. He would tell people I didn't really work for him. He just had me on the books to give me a salary because I had nothing else. For Emily's narcissist, image was everything. Yes, just like the image that you are trying to put together of you as a victim. Well, and the fact that, you know, obviously this dude's probably hot. And she probably feels good having him around. She's cause... getting the 23 dick, so, and she thinks it's lewd. Yeah. Yeah, I gotcha. Yep. So there's a, another person in my life who also destroyed her family for a piece of strange, just like this person. And she thinks it's all hunky-dory, and it always is until all of a sudden one day it's not. Yeah. And, and that, usually that, that begins. Yeah, and usually that begins roughly around the time when your friends stop hearing from you. <clears throat> when was the last time I heard from her? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Listen, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, and here we go. I'm a good-looking, financially secure woman. Well, you were until you, you know, quit your job. 
just because he said so. And she's got a bunch of kids. I mean, I'm yeah. sure in her mind, she thinks she looks good. Literally, uh, the only thing she would have to do to put a pin in all this is look him in the eye and say, no. That's right. That's it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. And then it either ends because control is what he wants, or he's like, oh, she actually stood up for herself. Fantastic. Now we can have an actual relationship. I don't but think she's that'll so, happen. Well, I don't think so either. But she's so mentally weak. Who the hell knows? <laughs> yeah. I mean, th- this is... Uh, I, there's a lot to this story that I don't believe. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, some real heinous shit went down. And she's covering it up. Yeah. Listen, like she's not talking about her ex-husband and how she delivered the news, how he found out, how it devastated him. Oh, actually, she talks about that right here, oh, here if you want to dive into it. All right. Doesn't talk to ex or kids, complains about them. I was married to a wonderful man. I didn't love him like I wanted to love someone, and our relationship ran its course long before we got divorced and I met Angus. See, this is uh, retrocausal. <laughs> Well, also, I mean, when women talk like this, they've already failed the dick stacking test. Yep. They can't pair bond with that guy. So there you go. Yep. She claims that she only used to date good men. No. See, this is more of that retro causal stuff. They rewrite the past in their own head because this is now the worst guy. So suddenly all the guys in the past that they dumped for stupid, pathetic, petty reasons, all of a sudden they become great guys. Yep. And this is where the slingback effect comes in. <clears throat> uh, but he's a wonderful, kind, generous man. And even though I didn't do everything right, he has never talked behind my back or smeared my name. In his mind, men do not do that about women they have been in relationships with, especially if they have children together. Right, first of all, uh, that is a weak motherfucker. <laughs> Right. You, you, if you destroy my family, you bet your ass I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about you exactly how you deserve to be I talked. I got nothing good to say to you. Yep. Or about you. But Angus was different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's different now. Before, he was different. It was a good thing. It was good enough for you to destroy your children's future. Correct. I feel guilty for believing his stories about his crazy ex-wife who abused him and held him back for years. See, this is more more of the same stuff. Yeah. Um, this really starts to... I mean, it sounds to me like Angus is just doing the same shit she did to her now ex-husband. Yeah. Good. Guess what's called karma? It sounds like he learned from the modern women in his life, to yeah. be completely honest. I think he was probably raised by a single mom. <laughs> yeah, could be. <sighs> I felt bad. Yeah, I felt, you felt guilty about that. But I felt bad for him when he said he had to leave with nothing, that she poisoned their children's minds. If a man doesn't have an amicable relationship with his ex-wife and especially kids, then you need to consider running, especially if he takes every opportunity to tear them down and you haven't seen any of their so-called crazy behavior for yourself. You mean like the people who read this article yeah. are not seeing any of this crazy behavior and we just have to take your I, word for listen, it? Listen, uh, all right. Hang on. <laughs> so he was bitching about his ex-wife that tore him down. Yeah. And he... And he, listen, they deserve everything they get. I mean, this is... Both of them deserve to be a, very unhappy. This is a karmic beatdown, cross, you know, flying crossbody cock block. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, this is a very long article. We're not going to go We're through all of it. Thing. But you, you get the gist here. If you want to read the whole thing, it is on redonkulous.com. You can uh, go to the homepage here. Give it a click. Watch our content here. Boom. Yep. Go to the today's stream, Narcissistic Mothers and the Children They Ruin, and here it is right at the bottom. Give it a click. Boom! And uh, down here also, you also you have the Help a Ranger in Need. There's the GoFundMe uh, for the Veteran Military Service Dog. And uh, it's already way up more than it was earlier. They're actually within striking distance of their goal with just 47 donations. So good. we're going to donate after we're finished up tonight. Definitely toss them a bone. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You could have phrased that better. You could have phrased that better. Uh, but here we go. Just one last thing. Now, dudes, I know you guys have been waiting for this for years. I know I have. I've been waiting for this person to finally tell me that she's ready to settle down. 
Yeah. And uh, I, I can't do anything about it now because I'm married to an actual good woman because fuck this bitch. Uh, Allison <laughs> Hammond, 48, admits she's finally ready to settle down and get married after years of getting cold feet in this relationship. She's 48. And morbidly obese. Wow. <laughs> yeah, f- at 48, she thinks she's going to get wait, wait, somebody wait, wait, go, to, go to write up, a check against her size 24 ass. Oh, Look at this. I mean, that is... She's she's three bills. That's a lot of woman right That's there. That's three bills. That's beyond full German, man. And that is this right here. I, she should just paint on the whiskers because this has catfish written all over it. Yeah. I know this ain't this probably ain't real hair and this is all makeup and yeah. But I got it. It's a real it. man. She's 48. 48. So and uh, now it's time to settle in. down. All right. So she's 48. Oh, you really get a feel for the size right here. Oh my lord. Wow. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, I think we're done with that one. <laughs> uh, somebody freed Willie, and now it's back on Tinder. Uh, I mean, I'm sure when she was younger, she was probably you know fairly attractive. Like, uh, maybe. Who to knows? 28-ish. But now, you know, 30 years later, get the hell out of here. Uh, just remember. And is that her son? Uh, yep, single mom. Yeah, Boom. There you go. Remember, dudes, she has a weave. It's your time to leave. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, let us know what you guys thought of that new pop culture episode. I personally think it's one of the best we've ever done. It's got to be in the top ten. I think it's freaking hilarious. The only ones I think that would come close to it would be, uh, you know, 500 Miles of Mr. Right. I think Wango Tango is up there, too. Challenge accepted. Yep. And then some of the Pimp Tart Wife Institute. <laughs> I think the Brendan Fraser one took the cake for that because oh, yeah. that was a that was actually one of the the only Pimp Tart Wife Institute we ever did that was ranked in the ten best of the year by the fans. Oh yeah, there we go. And now he's an Oscar winner. You know, f- finally somebody gets an Oscar who actually deserves it. Well done. He Brendan got that Fraser. for the whale. Yeah, yeah, that was a very sad movie. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not one that you put on for uh, you know lightening your mood. Yeah. Of course, most Darren Aronofsky films. I almost films. turned it off, you know, when uh, I found out that, you know, he was having a relations. It was a down low Dan or Big big Butt Bob. <laughs> big Butt Bob. <laughs> and Blippi ruined Bob. His, ruined his marriage. And, it, you know, oh, my God. I mean, you want, you want to talk about a cluster F right now. Uh, you know, that, that's how it goes. You got to, you got to. Take characters who are reprehensible, you know, have them do horrible shit that nobody in their right mind would ever do, and then you have to try to humanize them somehow. And it didn't help that, you know, no. he was a 500 pounder. Yeah, he's a 500 pounder with extra cheese. <laughs> That's just nasty. It is quite nasty. Oh, man. But, you know, a lot of the, the, a lot of the mannerisms that he uh, showed in that movie. I saw firsthand with my buddy Darren because he oh, was yeah. that heavy. Very similar situation. Yeah, it was terrible. I, I hope he didn't have the download Dan tendency. No, no, no. <laughs> no, there's none of that. Because that would be what's that word? Bad. Well, no, like like about ninety days before he passed, he had uh, a couple of ladies of the evening to come in here and deal with it. And I, I remember he like calls me. He goes, "Hey, you got to lock the front door." I come down. I'm like, "What's going on?" He goes. You know what's going on in here. I'm like, oh, God damn, this is disgusting. <laughs> Did he have to pay them overtime? I have no idea how, what. I have no idea what arrangement there was. Well, you gotta. I just uh, shut the door. At his weight, you gotta have one to, to service the twig and berries, and you gotta have another to lift the gulch. Well, or you know, at least one have to operate the jack. <laughs> Bill Murray and Groundhog Day. He's the fastest Jack in Jefferson County. Well, at least he got himself a little <laughs> before he decided to punch out. I get it. I get it. I got it. Uh, I just... Uh, I never thought I'd feel sorry for a sex worker. <laughs> That's exactly what's going through my head. I'm like... Uh, I'm literally upstairs. I'm like, what kind of hell is going on down? <laughs> but, but then again, they're, with their life decisions, that's 555 pounds of karma just waiting to drop on their head while they're doing what they do. Yep, yep. <laughs> In this case, the glory hole might drop directly into the basement. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. 
but it could have happened. And you know, Darren's probably just like right now. He's like, Those motherfuckers, they're no. right. <laughs> He had a he had, you know, he always had a really good sense of humor. Oh, he did. Yeah, I've, I've had I've had many conversations. That's why we were friends, man. Yep. He, he was a good motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Here's to him. There Wish him go. luck on his next adventure. May he may be you know watching over us now. He may have already decided to go back to the respawn point because he was that eager to no, you know, no. get get into a vagina. We talked in depth about this. Yeah, and he's like, when I'm dead, I'm going to go see the whole universe. That's what he's doing now. Cool. He's now you know doing a walkabout. He's going to do the walk. He's like Kane from Kung Fu. And I'm like, do you want to come back here? He's like, don't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to chill. All right, don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Just the description of that. There's dudes in the chat going, I'm having dry eaves. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Excuse me. So this 48-year-old woman. 48. Single mom, morbidly obese, wants to settle. So she's is she a former? Is she a star or something? I have no. I don't even know who the hell she is. Uh, the This Morning Star, so okay. daytime television. Okay, show. yeah, all right. I just it, it, sure. Is it raining? Whatever. It is raining. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, excuse me. What a nut roll. But yeah, I mean, you know, don't don't all line up at once, dudes. Yeah, I oh. mean, I know you've been waiting for Allison Hammond to say that she's ready for the real thing. You you just you're just waiting for it. I mean, you got your crankshaft in one hand and your wallet in the other, and you got your blindfold for the devil's braille. I got it because you know that's that's going on. Pounding it from the back, you're like, run. <laughs> it just says that over and over. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> Pre-nut clarity. It starts to happen to you in your late 20s. No, no. Like, I wouldn't even... Uh, uh, I wouldn't even <laughs> give a woman who's 48 a second look. I'd be like, you're what? You're 48? Yeah, no. And we're done. That's right. I, I just don't need the aggravation. No. I mean, they come with all the medical shit, all of the, the emotional baggage, and maybe a bunch of debt. I, 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 no, I like my uh, tranquility. I, I'm good. No, I mean, she, she's not living life in the fast lane anymore. Her life is on menopause. That's right. Bad news bears. Uh, we're going to read a couple of your YouTube chats here, and then we're going to take a quick break. It's 914. Okay. And jump on over to New Tech. We got Dung is Fun saying he's going to be the camera guy for his mom. Oh, God. You know what, though? No, no, don't do that. That wouldn't shock me. That 15-year-old kid, that, that wouldn't shock me at all. Mm. Uh, Sean St. George, in my opinion, withholding ugly truths and necessary life lessons from your children is a setup for future failure. Agreed. That's right. You need to be short-term mean to be long-term nice. Exactly. The world is cruel. Life is suffering. Going to have to grind to survive and grinder exceptionally harder to make it big. Correct. Yeah, welcome to my world. That's why I got high blood pressure. <laughs> You got you got high blood pressure. I, I work six days a week. What the fuck do you think? <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the club. And then sometimes and then that's just on a usual week. And this are time you taking of year. meds for it or what? Uh, I still got to get the meds. I've been taking all the, the. I've been doing the holistic shit. It it helps a little, but I'm probably gonna have to go on the meds. Well, I know one thing that helps me out a lot is I take uh, about two and a half grams of potassium a day. I take uh, potassium as well. Do oh, you take two and a half grams? I don't know if it's that much, but I take a potassium it's, it, pill with every meal. You're supposed to, you know, get about five grams of potassium just out of your diet a day. Yeah, and we Americans don't even come close to that. Oh no, no, it's it's so that's bad. why I, I take about twenty five to to twenty eight hundred milligrams of potassium a day. I take five hundred milligrams, you know, every four to five hours throughout the day. Okay, and, I can always up mine. And uh, it's good there, stuff. And I, if I if I stay on it and I don't you know and I only have one meal a day, I don't really need to take the blood pressure meds. There you in, go. Unless I need them. Yep. Uh, all right. Yeah, that does it for all the YouTube chats here. We still got four hundred and eighty eight of you guys still watching over there. Jimmy Bones, if you could paste the links into the YouTube chat, I would appreciate it. We got six hundred people watching over on the Rumblies and the Tumblies. Good to see you all. And we have 48 on Odyssey. MGTOW is rocking 78. Best chat on the web. 
10 on DLive, Twitch is rocking 20, and Kick has... It always says zero when I log into Kick. I just <laughs> have to do a reload on it. And there's five over on Kick. I'm telling you, if you want, like, just a pure, beautiful, crisp-looking stream, Kick is where it's at. But if you want the best chat, you, you know where to Gotta go. Gotta put a big towel. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, we're going to take a little break, head on over to New Tech here, take a piss, and, you know, refill our drinks, all that good stuff here. We got better butts, and we definitely have some stories for you. We got a Reaper Zero One story. Oh, yeah. You know those are good and usually not YouTube friendly. Oh. <laughs> you know exactly what's waiting for you. So I'm going right. to throw on some Jeffrey Paul tunes, enjoy those, and we'll see you guys in five minutes. All right. Oh, yeah. Where is it? I don't know. It disappeared. Did you, mess- did you get rid of it? It went away. <laughs> 